Good morning and welcome. And happy Mother's Day to all the mothers on Sunday. We come to the close of our Jonah series today. If you remember last week, the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. Go to the great city of Nineveh, proclaim to it a message that I give you. Forty more days and Nineveh will be destroyed. The Ninevites believed in God and were saved. Yes, our God of compassion, our God of mercy, our God of grace. Towards both Jonah, our reluctant prophet, and the people of Nineveh. So we bring our message series to a close. And if you've got a Bible with you, it's Jonah chapter 4. Let's read that. But to Jonah, this seemed very wrong. And he became angry. He prayed to the Lord. Isn't that what I said, Lord, when I was still at home? That is what I tried to forestall by fleeing to Tarshish. I knew you were a gracious and compassionate God, slow to anger, abounding in love. A God who relents from sending calamity. Now, Lord, take away my life, for it is better for me to die than to live. Friends, our mate Jonah, he is a bit of a drama queen. But the Lord replied, Is it right for you to be angry? Jonah had gone out and sat down at a place east of the city. There he made for himself a shelter, and he sat under it in, the, in its shade and waited to see what would happen to the city. Then the Lord provided a leafy plant and made it grow up over Jonah to give shade for his head to ease his discomfort. And Jonah was very happy about this plant. But at dawn the next day, God provided a worm which chewed the plant so that it withered. When the sun rose, God provided a scorching east wind and the blazing sun on Jonah's head so that he grew faint. He wanted to die and said, it would be better for me to die than to live. But God said to Jonah, is it right for you to be angry about the plant? It is, he said. I'm so angry. I wish I were dead. But the Lord said, you have been concerned about this plant, though you did not tend to it or make it grow. It sprang up overnight and then grew and then died overnight. And should I not have concern for the great city of Nineveh, in which there are more than 120,000 people who cannot tell their right hand from their left, and also many animals? I don't know about you, but it feels like we need to turn the page. It feels like we should, should have a bit more bit more dialogue, bit more information. And God and Jonah and the Ninevites lived happily ever after. But no, that's where the story comes to a close. I would say, yes, God, you can do what you like, for you are God. You would think Jonah would be very thankful and maybe a bit surprised as what has happened. Because of his very simple message to those people. Change or God will kill you. But no, he's angry. He's annoyed. He's frustrated. He's disappointed. But to Jonah, this seemed very wrong and he became angry. He prayed to the Lord, isn't this what I said, Lord, when I was still at home? Isn't this what I thought would happen? Isn't this why I fleed to Tarshish? 
There seems to me that there's been a bit more dialogue between God and Jonah that we don't have the pleasure of hearing. What's interesting to me is that when God looked at Nineveh before, they repented, he looked at the situation as evil and God was angry. But after they repented, after they survived, Jonah looks at it and he becomes angry. Friends, Jonah has some serious issues, some red flags, warning, warning. Don't have a crisis driven relationship with God. What do I mean by that? Don't only talk to God when things are not going well. Only, don't only talk to God when there's a drama and a crisis and a situation. Come to him always. Speak to him daily. God forgave the Ninevites. And Jonah just can't deal with it. I'm glad God gives us a second chance, a third chance. That he is in the business of forgiving, restoring and saving lives. In the middle of this chapter we read, Then the Lord God provided a leafy plant and, it, and made it grow up over Jonah to give him shade for his head to ease his discomfort. And Jonah was very happy with this plant. It's hot. And Jonah is a bothered man. So God provided for him some shade which he's happy about. God wants to show Jonah that he cares about him. And he wants to teach him something very important over the next few verses. The next morning, the plant is killed by a grub. And God sends a hot wind and a burning sun. And basically our mate Jonah, hey, he wants to die he wants to give up. He's had enough. But God shows Jonah an important part of his character. Something good for us to see. Something good for Jonah to see. There is a bigger story going on. There's a bigger story going on. This is not just about you. Yes, I care about you, Jonah, and I care about the good and the bad. Yes, bad things will happen. Yes, good things will happen. But my greatest concern was for the people of Nineveh and their salvation. Should I not be concerned for them, that great city in which there were more than 120,000 people? They were lost. They were without hope. And that's why I sent you, Jonah. That's why I chose you to bring that important message. For I was concerned for them and their evil, misguided ways. A lot of people are wondering what life will look like over these next few weeks and months as we move from our current situation. As restrictions are lifted and things are eased, eased and we have a few more freedoms as we reassess again and refocus again, my encouragement to you is don't go back to bad habits. Maybe over these last few months, you've discovered a new way of doing life and work. Maybe you've had a greater focus on your Christian walk and faith. As a church community, we've had an opportunity to meet together via Zoom meetings, to engage with one another on different platforms, to have different spe people speak into our lives and into our situation. It's vital that we reassess and refocus and move forward as a church community, embracing 
new ways of doing life, new ways of doing community, new ways of worshipping together over these next weeks and months. As we assess, as we refocus, as we move out from our homes and meet together, I look forward to what God will do. Friends, God is the God of the vine. He is the God of the worm. He is the God of the storm. He is the God of the great fish. He is the God of Jonah. And now he is the God of the Ninevites. He's developing patience. He's developing endurance. He's developing you and I into the men and women that God has called us to be. A young child asked his father, how were people born? So his father said, well, Adam and Eve made babies. Then those babies became adults and made babies and so on and so on and so forth. Then the child went to his mother and asked her the same question. And she replied, we once were monkeys. We evolved into monkeys and then we became like we are now and then we had babies and, and so forth. And the child ran back to his father and said, Dad, Dad, you lied to me. Mum said we came from monkeys. The father replied, oh, no, no. Your mother was only talking about her side of the family. <laughs> What's your prayer today? What's your hope today? What's your concern today? What's your prayer? Maybe it's Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going both now and forever more. God, I am committed to go to my Nineveh, to do that hard thing, to make a change, to speak out your message of hope, your message of truth, your message of love and grace and salvation. Stop running, start following. To do that hard thing, to make that change, to go to that place that you're calling us to go. God, your call is on us. Your message is within us. You are in control and you hold our lives in your hands. Help us to make the most of every day. Thank you, God, that our struggles and our triumphs do not go unnoticed. For you see and you hear and you guide and you lead. May we not delay, but may we obey. Please join with me in prayer. Father God, we thank you. That you are a God who guides and controls. That you are a God who calls us and draws us to yourself. May we embrace you, Lord Jesus, as our hope and our salvation. And may we not be people who delay, but obey. In Jesus' name, amen. May God bless you.